Okay, it's probably gonna be harder than I thought. Um, hi guys, my name is Ashley. I want to be involved, and I keep looking at myself. I'm sorry. I want to join the Floss Tube community. So hopefully this is my first Floss Tube. I guess if it all goes wrong, then you'll never see it, anyways. Um, so everybody in their intro always does a like origin type story. So I'll do mine. So when I was young, my grandma always crossed. I'm just kidding. <laughs> my grandma. Did not cross stitch. My grandma taught me a few things, and none of them were cross stitch. She taught me how to flip people off, a love for World Wrestling Federation back in the day, um, how to mix whiskey and Seven Up it was really yummy. Uh, my other grandma was pretty good at quilting and stuff, but I didn't really grow up around her, so maybe she did cross stitch. I don't know. The first cross stitch I ever recall, like being interested in when I was young, my mom pulled out a like pillowcase, and it had um, the crosses like etched on there or where you're supposed to stitch. I really liked it. Um, I really wanted to do it. She probably thought like, I don't know, maybe I couldn't. I was really like the nerdy kid always, always wanted to do jigsaw puzzles and stuff, even when I was young. So when I got like good grades, I got some good grades and I got to pick out one thing. So I wanted to pick out a cross stitch kit because, oh yeah, I didn't even pick out the one I liked. I picked out the one that would be the hardest. Hopefully I'm not knocking the table too much. It was a, a dimensions kit, had a bunch of wolves on it, and I'm not against wolves, but <laughs> they're not my favorite animal. <laughs> um, and they had birch trees in there. I remember just opening the kit, and I was so excited, but it's not printed on there. It was just, like, counted cross-stitch, and I was like, oh, geez. Um, I think I did a few stitches, and then I gave up, because then I ran into blended stuff, blended crosses, and I don't know, I was pretty young still, so... <laughs> I don't know what happened to that kid. I probably gave it away. Maybe it's floating around. I kind of hoard things, so I don't know. Um, the next time I recall is um, I was still young because I was at a babysitter's house, and she had this dragon thing hanging on her wall. It was cross-stitch. I didn't realize at the time, and I asked her where she bought it at because I really wanted it, and she said that her mom had made it for her, and I was just amazed. Like, oh my gosh, your mom is capable of making such a beautiful thing, and... Now that I now that I have more knowledge, I realize it was Teresa Wentler, Wentzler's The Castle, which I really want to stitch just as like an homage to that. Because I remember I would go to her house all the time and just stare at that freaking cross stitch on the wall. And um, I don't know why it still didn't occur to me, but it was years. Like, do you just think that cross stitch is what you see at Walmart and stuff like that? Or um, hob uh. <laughs> We didn't even have Hobby Lobby till recently, but like Michael's or Benjamin Franklin's, Ben Franklin's. Did anybody remember that place? Um, and you just get these kits with like teddy bears or flowers or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with those, but they're just not really my style. Um, the only, the one kit I did see was this like Asian style butterfly dimensions kit. That was one I really liked and thought I could possibly hang it on my wall. I got it probably when I was like in my early 20s. But then you spend your early 20s, well I did, kind of doing early 20s stuff, which is hanging out and drinking. Not a lot. Party hard. Go to school hard. Work hard. Party hard. Um, I wasn't, I was into projects and stuff, but not cross-stitching so much. I think mostly because I was kind of bored with the, like I liked it, but I wasn't like in love with it kind of thing. So, um... Now that I'm in my 30s, <laughs> I was cross. I was uh, thrifting around, which was like one of my favorite hobbies. And then I came across this small kit, and I bought it. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just resell it because I do resell stuff on the side. But I, it was small and cute and complex and everything. Or not complex, but uh, let me just show you. So um, it was just a little like ornament kit, and I think it's called the Sunset Smile or something to that effect. And it's on this like plasticky uh, cross stitching type stuff. There's supposed to be a little thing right here that hangs down and it says smile. And then um, you hang it there. But I mean, obviously you could tell my wires aren't that great. So I think if I were to make an ornament, I'd probably put just a clear string with the smile or leave it off. Put a crystal maybe. But I'm really thinking about like putting it in a, like on the cover of a book or something. Figure out how to stitch it into a cover book. Wouldn't that be cool? And I was really, like, pleased with how my stitches look. I think they look pretty nice. Considering, I mean, some of them were backwards and stuff, which I didn't realize that was a thing until later. So that was one, this is, like, my very first 
absolutely done cross stitch project. Um, so we'll just go into my second ones then, or my finishes, I guess. So then it was this one, which is another Dimensions kit. I think it's called Frog Trio. I think you can still get it. I have a, a frog-themed bathroom. This is everything from the kit, even the Ada and everything like that. I haven't washed it or anything like that. Um, look what I did on the back. Their little eyes are French knots, and then I just kind of... <laughs> I just did a French knot, moved over, did a French knot, moved over, and now it just has this, like, so I might redo that. I think I'm a little better. I'm not great at French knots. French knots are hard. Everybody hates them, and I know why, because it's it's hard, but um, I think I might redo that part, but yeah, I was going to um, frame this in a, it just is a five by seven. I got this frame, which I'm sure is around here. I have, like, a whole mess of everything that I want to show, so I got this frame somewhere, but it's kind of, like, a really nice frame. I don't think it's really a frog bathroom type frame. It has like a mat in it and everything, so I might save it for something else. But so yeah, that was my um second cross stitch finish. So then in the meantime, I was uh I started diamond painting because it was you know it was all over Facebook. Try it, try it, try it. I was like, oh, okay, let's do that. And they actually had images that I liked that I would be that I really called to me versus just uh teddy bears and crap like that. Um, so I was trying to figure out, like, I was just basically watching reviews online of, um, different companies, like, uh, Diamond Art Club is really expensive, so I was really looking at them, like, okay, is, what the heck's the deal here, because everybody else is, like, $10, and you guys are, like, 70 Uh, that's where I came across to Teresa's videos. She was doing a Diamond Art thing, something in her, di her dining room, I think it is, and, um, she has mermaids on the wall, and... She had made like a comment like, oh yeah, those are my something, something mermaids. I was like, and so I asked her to elaborate because they were so beautiful. And I was like, what are those? And she says, oh, those are my Mirabilia mermaids. If you go back in my videos and then you'll see more in-depth videos. So then, oh my gosh, guys, my world was freaking opened up because they were so beautiful. And then I was like, I never considered checking the internet, I guess, for, for freaking cross-stitching type things, especially those kinds that I like and stuff like that. Um, so I dived into the world of Mirabilia. I really wanted to do a mermaid, but I wasn't great at it. And then I didn't want to like do it and then it sucked or it was not great. And then I don't know, I guess I would have loved it anyways. I'm not like super perfectionist when it comes to that type of stuff. But so I was like, well, maybe I'll just make something for one of my parents. Cause when you give them ugly crap, they're supposed to like it anyways. It'll be good practice and stuff. I've never done like beading or crinic or I've never worked on anything besides Ada. But anyway, so my third finish, my last finish, I guess, is the um, Petal Fairy from Mirabilia. Am I showing the back? Oh, <laughs> there we go. The front of it. Isn't it so pretty? Oh, I love it. Um, I'm going to give this to my stepmother, though, which... I, I keep on debating, like, maybe I should just keep it. She doesn't even know that she's going to get it. But I feel rude because I've made it for her. I mean, it's not exactly perfect. There's um a few, like, her shoe I messed up, and it's got one less stitch, so it's a little shorter. Um, Over here in this wing, it, like, it's a little shorter. There's a really big mess up. And I don't know, maybe no nobody's really going to notice, maybe, except for me and you because I'm showing. But... Right there, I like did my stitches were like off, so they were a little taller than they were supposed to be, but I had already gone too far, so I just kind of winged it, but it still looks pretty. It looks it's such an organic type piece that it doesn't really like mess it up. And this was my first time doing chronic and beads. I'm really happy with it. I love it. I might actually stitch it again for me because I really do love her little yellow flower thing skirt. Um, and you know what? I, this happens to me all the time, even now, like buying stuff. Like I bought, when I saw this online, I was like, great, I'll buy it. And it'll fit in like, it'll be like seven inches tall. And then, you know, one, two, three stitches, like, Hey, maybe you should get this, um, 20 inch plus fabric. And I, I'm like, yeah, just throw it in there. Great. Sounds awesome. <laughs> and then when you're stitching it, you're like, holy cow, this is like 17 inches tall. Um, and I still do that with patterns. Like you'll, you'll, it looks small, but then when you actually do it, it's like big. Am I the only one? Probably not. I don't know. I hope not. But 
this is really beautiful. I'm really happy with how it came out. I did learn a lot. Um, you can tell that a, like towards the beginning here. So I would just work from top to bottom. I started, I did this whole flower and then I worked, I did this whole flower, worked all the way around. And uh, I wasn't keeping my stitches going one way versus the other way. I wasn't railroading or anything. I was just like doing it and was enjoying it. Um, then something, stuff happened. <laughs> it's just life happens, guys. And I got out of the groove with it. And then I started really hating stitching these stupid things. So, anyways, this fabric is my first, um, I think it's a linen. I don't know why everybody says they like linen. There's a... I know they told they warned me about schlubs or whatever those things are, which are a pain, but not really super. The thing is, like, some of the thread fibers, they'll start out really thick, and then they go, like, really thin, and then they're just, like, really thin, and then they'll go thick again. So then you're, it, to me, my crosses are wonky, and they're like, oh, if you're experienced, then you should be able to make all your crosses, crosses, <laughs> all your crotches look even. So... It, I think in the end, all of them kind of just even out and um, come out fine anyways. But yeah, so this is my third finish. So yeah, then I just kind of dived into everything that the internet has to offer. Um, this is the kit that I was... I'll go to Whips now. This is the Oriental Butterfly from Dimensions. This is a kit I was mentioning how I like bought it and was like, oh, I'll actually stitch this. I really do love this still. Don't get me wrong. It's got an Ada. I'm using just the kit. I'm almost done with it, I think. I have to stitch the little figures over here. I have to do some more like half stitch backgrounds. There's like a little coin bit you stitch up here. It's really pretty. I notice though when I'm stitching this, I um it's it causes my hand pain because you're pulling through like pulling through it just makes I have to do a lot more effort I don't know what it is they gave me a really big fat needle which I tried and I it didn't seem to help at all so I just went back to my small needle also I'm a huge fan of sharks so I got my little shark needle minder here um needle minders are a lot of fun a lot of cool stuff so then this is uh the next thing that the internet opened my eyes to was um, stitch alongs and I made the mistake of joining a bunch of them because <laughs> it sounds so great and so fun and so mysterious but then as you're stitching as I was stitching I realized like you spend a lot of time on stuff you know I don't want to spend time on stuff that I'm not really super into so there's one stitch along that I totally abandoned and I don't want to say I it, it's still really cute it's just not my style and if I were to I don't want to waste time or spend time doing that there's another one, um, Grimm's Fairy Tale, which I do like that one still a lot, and I might do it later, but I put it aside for now at minimum. And then there's this one, which is The Chopping Mall by The Witchy Stitcher. And I can't see if you guys can see anything, so as you can see, I got the top mostly done, and then four stores done. And then I'm just working slowly on the little, um, what is that, the little background type thing. Yeah, I really like, every time I finish something of this, I am in love. I'm just like, oh, they're so cute. Um, I'm really like, whenever I stitch on this, it makes me think of my grandma, the one that flips people off and drinks whiskey. She loved horror movies like this, so I don't know. I'm going to do a, a little, I think down here there's like little um tombstones or whatever. So I'm going to try to do a little homage to her. And then here's my other little sharky needle minder. Isn't it so cute? It's just eating a little seal. Ah, I love it. Um, this is all the called for uh, things, all the called for threads and fabric. Um, this lesson learned is that it's a Pictureless Plus fabric. And I was like, great, I'll just go on Pictureless Plus and order it. And then you learn that you're going to get it in six years, minimum. <laughs> no, maybe it took like just a couple months. I don't know. It just took a lot longer than I expected it to, which um, it's disappointing, but I mean, I think that's with all, am I the only one that orders fabric and then like gets it 600 years later? No, maybe. I don't know. My, moral of the story is Pictures Plus, Plus takes a long time. I ordered from another cross stitch store online. It's like a smaller retailer and it's taking forever too. I think it's only been like 10 weeks, but it's still, I just want it. Um, my third whip is, so I fact, so after the pedal fairy, I'm like, oh, I can do whatever now. So here I got my 
little Mirabilia Lilith from Labrador, I think is what it is. This is on a 32 count Whimsy, and I think it's a linen as well, so apparently I didn't hate linen enough. This one's a lot softer. The one I did the Petal Fairy on was like more plasticky. I don't know what the difference is there. I don't know if it's like a different brand or whatever. So picture this plus if you order it from 123 Stitch, will come right away apparently. But yeah, I'm working on her currently, so I'm really happy with her. This is also the first time I've used uh, Water Lilies, which I guess is silk. So I've been using Monsoon, which is super beautiful. And then this one up here is fresh pink, I think, or something. And then I have my little uh, other little shark needle minder. And then um, I got this out of a stitch box from Volcano Stitching. Yeah, Volcano Stitching, she does fabrics and it's great. So then the, the fourth project is a Haid. This is going to be a Bath Time Mermaid. Um, hopefully I can insert a picture of it because I don't have like a printed picture or not. I've been doing it on Pattern Keeper. I love working on this. This is a 25 count magic guide, I believe. I've just been doing one over one. I got my little stitching octopus. This was my first ever needle minder. I still love it. I think I have some more from whoever I bought this for, but I don't know where I put it. Um, I was just doing, like, I started the first one, and then I just did all those that fit on here. I only have, like, one parked thread down here, and then I just finished the thread, finished as much as I can. Uh, and then I was like, man, I wish I would have done cross, extreme cross country is something else that I saw. And then my brain was like, you know what? There's no rules in cross stitching. Just go do cross country. So I think next time I break this bad boy out, I'm going to do all the biggest number the biggest number of the ones first do the whole thing and then I'm going to go through and do smaller ones I know people do all the biggest ones first and then work their way to the smallest but to me the smallest one seems to have more it's going to have more carrying of threads so I don't know but yeah that's my fourth one I'd like to have five whips on the go but uh I ordered fabric for my fifth whip and I'm still waiting for it that's that cross stitch store I was telling you about so I guess now we do haul or whatever. Um, I have a local NS, LNS, local needle store. I feel like they're expensive, but you want to, I want to support them. So I, whenever I go there, they always seem to have any chronic that I need or, um, specialty threads or whatever. So I always go through like their Halloween box and stuff. I love Halloween stuff, even though I have no like Halloween whips. Um, so I bought the Waxing Moon Designs Dem Bones. I haven't like kitted it up or anything, but I think it's super cute. I mean, little skeleton, there's like little skeleton buttons. Yeah, those are so cute. So, uh, then I bought this, what is this one? The Baker's Wife by Nora Corbett. I really like her and the Duchess of Rowan or whatever, but I joined a group and somebody had converted them to like more gothic. I think I'm going to do that. I think one of them is holding like a skull and the other one's holding like a spider or something. And one's in red and one's in black. And um, But I do like these colors too, so I don't know. And then I bought the Shores of Hawk Run Hollow. I, I don't know why I really like these ones, but... <laughs> Uh, I bought that one. I also bought Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. I want to do it. I want to do them um, in the silks, the called for silks. And maybe the called for in Autumn, I bought the fabric, which is 40 count sand dune or something from Lakeside Linen. Sorry, I burped. Um, which I can only get off of one site. And they just said they'd message me when they sent it out. And I haven't gotten a message yet, so I guess it's not sent out yet. I don't know. Um, let's see. I got the Halloween quilt sampler by Rosewood Manor, which is so cute. And it comes with this little button. And then I got two Mill Hill stick skits. This one's called Happy Halloween. Hopefully the reflection is not too bad. And then there's this one, Wish on a Star. I have no stash. I don't like the idea of, of sable or whatever, and I really have no stash. Only stuff that I've ever bought at a thrift store, and usually I resell it. I just can't leave it there. I usually get a good deal on it, and then I feel bad if it, like, stays there or whatever. Um, 
I bought a bunch of fabrics from Cross Stitching Supplies, just at like curiosity, but they're just like more plain ones because I want like a nice beige color to do, but I don't want them to be too dark. Like I got this one, Copper Penny, and I think it's just so dark or green or something. And then this one is um, Antique Ivory, which is pretty. I think I put some of them in a different thing. So then, yeah. Um, plans wise, I've been trying to, I wasn't going to do Stitch Mania, but since they're like basically closing or whatever, I decided, okay, I'll do it. And then I was like, should I do 15 or should I do 21? Cause I think they originally did 15 and I think they did it for the year, which year is 21. So I figured I'll do 21 projects, which actually works out cause I work like roughly 10 days a, a month and that'll leave me about 21 days in May. So that's a new start every day and I'll have my five whips, hopefully if the other one ever gets here. And then, so that would leave me with like 15 to 16, 16, I guess, uh, open days to start stuff. So that's what I'm going to try to do is a new start. So I've been slowly buying that stuff and kidding it up. Um, I have other haul, but it's fabric and it's from Volcano Stitching. She's wonderful. <laughs> I don't, I should advertise her for her, but, oh, I get her stuff so much quicker than other people that it's kind of hard, but I guess I'll do it. So I bought her, um, St. Patrick's Day box. She got, she, uh, I guess for the opalescent, I think it's 32 count opal and it's, she got me this, or she, I got this really pretty brown color. It's really opaly, which is nice. And it's actually a pretty big size, 18 to 26, 18 by 26. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put on that. That's the other thing with fabric. Like, some people buy it and I'm just like, oh, I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to buy it without knowing what's on it. Got this really pretty green one. And it's opaly. They're also really, like, shiny. I love it. 18 by 26 as well. Then you get this smaller orange one. I would say it's probably a little more bright than the camera showing, but... Still very beautiful. There's this one which will be really good for Halloween. And then this one which has a clover on it. And it's also opalescent as well. She had a... I think it was spring or Easter or something that I also... I partook in and I also ordered opal because I thought it would look good on the um it's probably pastels I'm guessing so I ordered those and then I probably won't order more opal because I'm not sure I mean I don't sometimes opal takes away and then I ordered these two pieces like separately and these are 28 count I thought this was more of a blue color I don't know it, it's more of like a tealish color I don't know if I can I don't know. Can you guys tell? Does that look blue or like teal or something? And when I ordered it and I showed my husband like the picture, he's like, yeah, those look really nice teal colors. I thought when she showed me originally, I thought it was like a pink in the teal. This is a different one. It was like same color, but slightly more like, you know, I don't know, modeling. Is that what it's called? I don't know. I'm really happy with those. So that was that. So yeah, plans wise, I'm just working on, uh, <sighs> kidding up for mania basically i want to try to do some project bags so i have some i went to the fabric store which is a very dangerous idea <laughs> don't ever go there i want to show you my ideas though i got this fabric uh jack skellington and i think he would look good with this color and then i'm just going to do the interior with this color but i'm really excited he's like a soft i think he's supposed to be like a blanket or something i don't know and then Oh, oh. Uh, I got Pikachu. I'm just going to do his inside and then the top of his bag with this color. Hopefully you can hear me. I don't know. I didn't even think about that when I started this. I hope it's not really quiet. I hate when people have really quiet videos. But it's your first one, right? And then I got this one. I, I kind of went crazy. I probably, I've never even made, I've never even sewn anything. I sew, I sew, I have sewn one like half-ass costume on my thing. Usually I just fabric glue everything together. But yeah, I got this color, and this is like a, a shiny black color I think will look nice on top. And then um, they have this like scrap bucket, and everything was 50% off. So I found this Galaxy. It's also got glitter on there. I don't know if it'll show up. There it is. I'm going to put that on the inside of this one, I think. I might even make a bag just out of this, because I love that. 
Um, and then I got these like rainbow butterfly. This is really pretty, but it's only like this size. It was like a half, a fat quarter, something or other. I don't know. I don't really know the terminology. But I think I'm just going to do it with this on top, the bows, and on the inside. And then um, the discount section that I was talking about, it also had this Jack Skellington fabric in it for like six bucks. It's almost a yard, but not quite, so I guess they can't sell it as a whatever. Um, I might change him out for the other one that I showed you, or maybe I'll just make two of them. It also had this Harry Potter house fabric. I'm a, I do like Harry Potter. I'm not like a huge, super massive fan, but I figure I could use it for something. That's the problem. That's the dangerous part. And then there was like this star spangled banner, star spangled thing, which I definitely do want to make a patriotic bag at some time. So I've been watching all the tutorials and then hopefully it's as easy as they look. And then the other problem I told you already is waiting forever for projects. So I got this at the thrift store. I got a couple eight o'clocks at the thrift store and then I went to, I guess, Joanne's because it says it right there. Duh. I got a 28 count even weave. I don't know how people dye fabric, but they like don't tell you the top secret. Where do you get the fabric at? <laughs> so I don't know if I'm missing something there. They don't have them on whatever. Um, I also found this Charles Craft 18 count at a at the thrift store it's kind of smushed but i'm sure it'll work just fine and then i got dye so i also got a blue one but i can't find it i wonder if uh my i wonder if my uh boxers stole it hopefully not but she steals random weird shit all, or weird stuff all the time and then i got some zippers for my little bags so that's my plan so i'm gonna try to do i want to do like a floss two video every month to show you my updates i probably don't have a lot of haul i'm thinking i want to limit myself not because I have to, but I, like I said, I don't like the idea of having a big stash because what if I, I don't know, what if my arms get chopped off and I can't cross stitch anymore? <laughs> just kidding. That's a little violent, but, um, so I'm just slowly acquiring things. I don't want to acquire so many things. And then uh, there's more ranting to come later. But anyway, so I, I'll probably do one more video before me, mania, so I can kind of go through all the things that I want, I plan on stitching and stuff like that and um maybe i'll show you some project bags some hand dyed fabrics by moi and yeah that'll be and i ordered some stuff to make needle minders like go all in i'm not opposed i'm not opposed to buying hand dyed fabric i think it's going to be a lot harder than i think it is but if you if i just want something simple like i really want just a light purple opalescent i don't even know how to make paper opalescent stuff um then i mean where do i buy it at <laughs> I don't want to wait six weeks just for some light purple fabric kind of guys. So I'm thinking I could just like dye it myself, obviously, with purple and not yellow. And then it'll be done. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So, um, and then project bags. I love buy. I would buy project bags, but I can't seem to find, like I bought these ones, which I really like. These are Fancy Boy Designs, I think is what he's called on Instagram. I think it's a knitting project bag, though, which I guess maybe I should have read the things more. Oh yeah, Fancy Boy Designs. Anyways, I should have read the things more. These don't really fit. Like, I would like to fit, um, I have my hate on a 11 by 8 Q-snap, and it, like, barely fits in there. Um, and even when it does fit in there, it doesn't zip. It can't zip up. And I put all my things, all my, um, bobbins and stuff in, like, boxes like this. And I'd like to just stash them both in there, especially because I have all the hates in one by itself, and I can't do that. So if I make my own, I could just make a, I can make like a 50 by 50 inch bag if I wanted to, and I think I will. I think I will. So, yeah, anyways, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully somebody appreciates this video, I don't know. Um, yeah, good night.